We regularly offer hotel review videos to help people who may be looking for accommodations in one of the places we visit. On our most recent trip to the Outer Banks, we stayed in the town of Manio on Roanoke Island. We will do a room tour and talk about the amenities here. And stay tuned because this place is near a bunch of cool attractions and we'll tell you what those are as well. We booked this room for a weekend in July and we only booked it a couple weeks out. Rooms book up fast for the summer in some Outer Banks towns, but we've had luck getting rooms in Manio last minute in the summer a couple of times, even though Manio has its own popular attractions and is not too far from both Nags Head as well as the Hatteras National Seashore. Check-in here was interesting. We arrived around 8 p.m. to check in. The office was closed, but there was a kiosk where you are connected with a live person who is not on site via video chat. You have to type in some information and then place your ID on a scanner so they can confirm it's you. There's a credit card reader there for payment. And then the kiosk spits out your room key. I assume this was just because the office was closed for the evening, but we came back at lunchtime the next day and our room key card didn't work. I went looking for someone in the office to talk to about it and no one was around. So I called the hotel's phone number and the person who answered told me to just go back to the kiosk and the video agent would help me get a new card. So we never really saw a hotel employee. This inn is set up motel style where the room doors open to the outside world. The main building had about a dozen or so rooms. Our room was across the parking lot in one of a couple different duplex type buildings. It was room 15. All of the rooms at this inn are different. They feature antiques and other unique furniture so that no two rooms are alike. The room was very clean. We had a queen bed. They also had king rooms and some rooms with two double beds. The room had a flat screen LCD TV along with an iron ironing board and dresser. There was a radio alarm clock with a USB charger on the bedside table. The smaller duplex-like buildings had window air condition units which cooled the room pretty well. Both the TV and the air conditioner had remote controls so you could change channels and adjust the temperature from bed. There was one chair in the room and a table with a lamp and a coffee maker on it by the door. The room also had a microwave. There was a sink there by the microwave out in the room in addition to the bathroom sink and a mini fridge with freezer and an ice tray in it. The bathroom itself was two separate rooms. One had a sink and hand soap and lotion. The water heater was also in that room. And another room next to it featured the toilet and a tub and shower combo. The shower had body wash and shampoo dispensers on the wall. There was a freezer at the main building with bags of ice in case you needed more than the ice tray in your mini fridge provided. There was also a yard area with some lawn chairs out in case you wanted to sit outside. I assume that this area on the property is where smoking is allowed as well. Now before our next point, I just want to stress that our room was very clean. We looked around to make sure the room had been cleaned when we arrived. We made sure there were no bed bugs on the mattress. Everything looked great. But we laid down in bed the first night and suddenly heard a noise in the room. I flicked the light on and saw a June bug flittering around. So I got out of bed, grabbed a shoe, and brought the June bug stay at the inn to an end. I laid back down and the same thing happened like an hour later. And then again a few minutes later. Five June bugs visited us that night and I did my job as the official bug killer of our marriage. I was wondering where these bugs were coming from. Their entrance into the room was particularly loud. I figured out where they were coming from in the morning when I got this view of the sunrise underneath our hotel room door. There was significant space between the bottom of the door and the bottom of the door frame. They should probably fix that, but I didn't mention it to the kiosk. The next night, I just rolled up a towel and put it at the bottom of the door frame and no bugs got in, so you can use that as a temporary fix if you stay here and have that problem with your door. We 
are going to talk about room rates and nearby attractions now, but while you're here, do us a favor and click on the thumbs up button to like this video. It will help our channel out and we would appreciate that. A room at Scarborough Inn will run you about $250 a night in the summer. Maybe a little more or a little less depending on room type. We did get a bit of a discount by going through booking.com. If you visit outside of the summer season, the rooms are less than half as much, which is common in the Outer Banks, where the vast majority of tourists visit in the warmer months. If you stay at this inn, you are close to a number of popular attractions. Island Farm, which our last video was all about, is less than three miles away. The popular Christmas shop is located diagonally across the street from the inn. Less than four miles away is the Elizabethan Gardens, a beautiful botanical garden. Then right next to that is the Fort Raleigh Historical Site, where the Last Colony play is performed each summer, and where you can see a visitor center and earthworks built by the first English settlers. Roanoke Island Festival Park is a mile and a half away from Scarborough Inn, it's a historical recreation site where you can see a recreation of the kind of boat the settlers used to sail to the New World, the kind of settlements they set up when they arrived, and also learn all about the Native Americans who already lived in the area. There's also a marina across the water from that park with some nearby restaurants and shops and one of the most unique lighthouses of the Outer Banks, a river lighthouse called the Roanoke Marshes Lighthouse, which is the shortest lighthouse in the Outer Banks. This inn provided everything we needed for our weekend stay and was reasonably priced compared to other hotels and motels in the Outer Banks. The variety of room decor was interesting and the room was comfortable. The only negative was the June bugs, but the issue with the space under our door might have been unique to the room we stayed in and can be easily resolved by blocking the entrance. Click on the links at the end of this video to see our tours of some of these Manio attractions. You'll find Fort Raleigh and Roanoke Island Festival Park as well as the Manio Christmas Shop. These are all within a few minutes drive of the Scarborough Inn. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. And please click the subscribe button and notification bell so we'll be sure to see you the next time we're traveling through.